The transfusion of blood products, such as packed red blood cells, plasma, or platelets, is a task that requires the use of specific equipment, as well as the following of specific procedures, in order to guarantee the safety of the recipient. This video will demonstrate and explain the steps that must be taken once the product has arrived to the floor. This includes verifying the product with a second healthcare worker, hanging the blood, programming the pump, and monitoring the patient. When blood products are received on the floor, there are some strict time frames that must be adhered to. Blood products must be initiated within 30 minutes of release from blood bank. If you won't be able to meet that time frame, blood should be returned to the blood bank. If the blood has not been hung within the first 20 minutes and there is any possibility that it won't be hung before 30 minutes, contact blood bank immediately and send the product back. If the blood is out of the freezer too long, it'll become too warm to be refrozen, and once the blood is greater than 10 degrees Celsius, it will be disposed of. Blood is a very limited resource, so be certain you adhere to the required time frames or send the unit back to blood bank right away. Blood products must be completely infused within four hours of release from blood bank. Any blood products that remain after four hours must be removed and discarded. Any tubing used for a blood product transfusion must also be disposed of after four hours. This may mean that in some instances, where multiple units are infused quickly, the same tubing could be used for those multiple units, as long as they will all be completed within the 4-hour window. But if a consecutive unit of product will not be completed before the 4-hour window closes, all new tubing must be used to start that transfusion. This will be the case for most blood transfusions on the inpatient units. The blood will arrive to the floor through the pneumatic tube system. Included with the blood will be a blood product infusion checklist. On one side will be important information regarding the administration of blood products, and on the opposite side will be space to track vitals for the infusion. No patient information is present on this form. Having received the blood, the product must be verified before administration, which means information will be rigorously checked and double-checked prior to giving any blood product to ensure that it is the correct product for this patient and that it is safe for transfusion. This process must be completed by two people. It must include at least one RN, but the second person could be another RN or a PCT trained for blood product verification. Attached to the unit of product, there will be a sticker. On one side of that sticker is patient information, and on the other side is product information. You will be matching this sticker to both the patient by using the wristband and to the product by matching the information to the bag itself. The verification process requires each person to listen to their partner read information while matching that information to their label. And then you will switch roles, and the listener will now read off of their label as the partner listens and matches that information. Begin by verifying the patient. One person will read from the sticker attached to the blood product, while the other listens and matches that to the patient's wristband. Read and spell the patient name. I have Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z. Read the birthday. Date of birth, 8-11-1975 and read the MRN. MRN 37860-1342. Now reverse the process, and the listener will read off the wristband as the partner matches to the sticker. Thomas Cruz, T-H-O-M-A-S-C-R-U-Z, date of birth, 8-11-1975, MRN 37860-1342. If there are no discrepancies, move on to verify the product by matching information from the bag to the information on the other side of the sticker. Read the unit number. Unit number W2022227913 Read the blood product code. Blood product code E0336RBCAS1. Read the expiration date. Expiration date 9-2022. And finally, the blood type. Blood type is AB positive. And then check that the patient's blood type on the opposite side of the sticker matches to ensure that they are compatible. The patient is also AB positive. And then reverse the process and have the information read back. Unit number W2022227913 Blood product code E0336RBCAS1 Expiration date 9-20-22. Blood type AB positive. Patient also AB positive. If all information matches, the product is safe to administer. If there are any discrepancies, do not administer this product, but instead contact Blood Bank immediately. If the verification was successful, log into Epic to finish the process. 
go to the blood flow sheet and click on Begin Blood Transfusion. A prompt appears to link the product to a specific IV. Choose the line that will be used for this transfusion. Then scan the unit number, product code, blood type, and expiration date barcodes. If pre-vitals were charted within the last 30 minutes, they should auto-populate in the vitals field. If they do not populate, enter them here. Scroll down to address some more required fields. Verify that consent was signed. If ordered, that any pre-medications were administered. That patient education was provided. Normal saline is infusing. And remember, 0.9 normal saline is the only solution that is appropriate for use with a blood transfusion. Identify if a blood warmer was used. And finally, choose Yes on administration charges to complete this sheet. After you choose Accept, it will give you a chance to review your documentation before choosing Sign Off at the bottom. And then it will prompt you to have your partner sign in, verifying that they completed the double verification process with you and that you found no discrepancies. After they have signed off, they are free to leave, and you will complete the blood administration process for this patient. Now hang the blood. Close the roller clamp leading to the saline. Use the remaining spike to access the blood product. Open the roller clamp below the product bag and squeeze the filter chamber to prime some product into the chamber. Program the infusion pump using the drug library. Push the button for the A line and use the soft keys to choose blood products from the available list. You'll start by entering the total volume of the bag, and this can be found on the sticker attached to the blood product bag. Every unit of blood is not the same, so always verify the volume before programming. Now you'll need to prime the entire line with blood. Make sure the IV is disconnected from the patient. Cover the IV with a swab cap, and then return to the pump. You can use the pump to quickly prime the line by having the detached IV line run with the maximum rate of 999 milliliters per hour. First enter the volume to be infused, which is the same as the volume of the blood bag. Then for the rate enter 999 and start. You can drain the fluid into a sink as you wait for the blood to reach the end of the tubing, and as soon as the fluid at the end of the tubing is colored slightly red, stop the infusion pump and attach the IV tubing to the patient's IV. Return to the pump to continue the program. Choose the A-line again, and don't clear the settings that are already entered. We'll just edit them. For the first 15 minutes of any transfusion, the blood will be administered at the slow rate of 50 cc's per hour. So change the rate from 999 to 50, and push Start. As soon as you start the blood, get a new set of vitals on the patient and document them in Epic. During this initial 15 minutes, the nurse will remain in the room at the bedside, observing the patient for any signs of reaction to the blood product. Common signs and symptoms of transfusion reactions can be found on the information page that arrived with the blood. If you notice any reaction in your patient, follow the instructions on this form. On the other side of that form is a place to track the required vital sign checks during a transfusion. You should have already completed the pre-transfusion vitals before you release the blood product, and just now, as you started the blood, you got the start time vitals. The next set will be done after the initial 15 minutes. Then vitals will be required every hour. But be aware that this is an hour from the start time, not from the last set of vitals. So if we started the infusion at 2 o'clock, the 15-minute vitals would be taken at 2.15, and the hour vitals would be taken at 3 o'clock. And if the blood were still running at 4, 5, or 6 o'clock, we would do vitals at those times. Another set will be needed as soon as the transfusion finishes, and then again one hour after the finish time. The vitals can be recorded on this form, but this is just for the easy visualization of trends. The vitals must be transferred into EPIC as well. This form is not a piece of permanent charting. All vitals must be entered into EPIC. If after 15 minutes there are no signs of reaction, increase the rate of the infusion. For non-complicated patients, the infusion should be completed within 1.5 to 2 hours. Patients that have CHF or fluid overload will need a decreased rate of infusion to protect them from any further fluid overload. Remember, the maximum time for an infusion is 4 hours. When you are checking vitals, also listen to lung sounds. If sounds such as crackles develop, it is a sign that the patient is experiencing fluid overload and the infusion should be slowed. When changing the rate, enter the desired time of infusion into the duration field. Policy does not specify a specific rate of the infusion, only specific time frames. Some units will have more or less than 325 milliliters of blood. They still need to be delivered within a specific time frame. So entering a duration of one and a half or two hours will allow the pump to calculate that specific rate for this unit of blood. The administration of blood products can be very dangerous. It is important to follow the proper procedure at every step to ensure the safety of the patients.